Crypto bulls are running, or are they not? That is the big question here for today on our tokenomics. Are the crypto bulls back and are they ready to run or is the bear in the house? So anyway, I, what I wanted to do today, guys, is just jump in. Um, we're going to just do a screen share real quick right in here to CoinGecko. And what I wanted to look at is, um, you know, the market's starting to look like it's about to get hot. Summer is about half over. We're going into August. You know, I was talking to my partner who's been trading for a very long time. And uh, he said, look, usually summer's pretty slow. And then when it gets to September, then that is when trading goes really well. And this is not just in crypto trading. This is a trading as a whole. So a lot of people on summer vacations, it's hot out there, whatever. I don't know the reason, but it definitely is. But we can see here as it's pulled up on the chart that Bitcoin is back at 40,329. Of course, we know that the first signs that the bull is showing up and coming back is a rise in Bitcoin. So I guess the first question is, is do we believe that Bitcoin can go to an all time high again? go blasting past that 60,000, maybe go to 70, 80, 90, maybe even 100,000 this time. So uh, we had some pullbacks. A lot of people didn't think it was going to get back into the 20s. Some did. I watched a lot of stuff. It kind of, uh, you know, even some of the same people at one point said it wouldn't and then said it would. So they took both positions. I guess that's their, their right to take a couple different positions on it. But Bitcoin's up 18.1% in the last seven days. That's pretty good. Of course, the weekend's usually a little soft anyway. So we will see um, on here now. Of course, I don't know when the editor's going to get to this video. Uh, but right now it is uh, 8.1. So hopefully this is up in the next couple of days. We get this up and get this edited um, and go from there. But we have Ethereum at 26.09. We have uh, Binance at 3.38. You know, I think Binance, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Binance coin right now because of the pressure from the six or seven countries now that are looking into it. Of course, we know that XRP has been being looked into in the U.S. for a long time, which is one of the bigger markets, and it is still at 74 cents. So um, there's a long ways to go to even believe or think that maybe uh, something is, you know, I mean, Binance is one of the whales in the room, right? The whale is Bitcoin, Ethereum. I would say Binance and Cardano is coming on extremely strong with what is getting ready to come out here uh, very soon um, with the Cardano. So, um, and that's an interesting talk in itself is Cardano, you know, with um, the smart contracts coming, you can now, of course, uh, create other coins on there, other tokens. And then now smart contracts are on their way. I saw another interesting one that was talking about the difference between Ethereum and Cardano. Of course, Ethereum is let's get it out there. Let's do it. Let's try it and see what works. And then Cardano is very more, much more um, thought out and takes its time and does the peer reviews and, you know, goes through a real process before they put it out there. Only time will tell which of those processes is the best uh, or the best way to go. Um, right now, Ethereum's at a $305 billion market cap and Cardano's at 42. So up to this point, it would seem that Ethereum is was the better approach. However, uh, we'll know once smart contracts are out, probably in the next three to six months, maybe a year at the most, we'll know which process is the better way to do it. Now, I know that Cardano is more scalable and it's going to be able to handle the transactions. That's one of the things that I think about a lot when I look at the blockchain is. If you think about it, a lot of people will talk about financial transactions and the speed at which Visa and some of these other banking institutions and stuff can process transactions. However, remember, the blockchain is not just the um, not just financing. I mean, it's more like the number of transactions that take place on the internet. And then, of course, if we're going to add another 2 billion people to the financial system or to modern society, bring them out of the third world side of things and into more into the economy, that's going to even increase transactions more. Because remember, the blockchain is not just about finances. I know DeFi is the big thing, but NFTs and all different sorts from books to music to art, collectibles, and then you have medical 
what happened right now. Think about the number of medical records that are in the world right now. Now, if you put that on the chain and it's all done on the chain, that would be just a, a tremendous amount. But then you start looking at all the other things, um, real estate transactions. Um, the list goes on and on of the different things that will be on there. Um, tracking uh, packages, right? Tracking uh, um, freight and shipments um, all over the world. Imagine, you know, at some point when all frozen foods, all organic foods and all this stuff is being put on the blockchain in these transactions. So I can see a time when there is a need for billions of transactions on a daily basis. So even on these blockchains that are doing 50,000 transactions a second, right? You know, what is that? Uh, about 3 million a minute, right? And then, you know, going up from there. So it's it's definitely going to take several chains in order to make it happen. That's a good thing because that means Ethereum and Cardano and maybe, you know, four or five other main chains can exist and um, still be busy enough to build value. So anyway, so what I wanted to jump into there in here today is see is, okay, if the bull's getting ready to run again, because it's been pretty sideways here now for a few months, right, um, over this period of time, if the bulls are getting ready to run, what would be your picks for it? So we've got Polkadot here. I believe it was up at around $40. It's down to $18.93, and it's up 36% in the last, you know, six, uh, last seven days. So this was down in there. So we know that right now, if the bull's getting ready to run again, a lot of these main cryptos are going to go through the roof, right? Um, and I think, you know, being able to look back, let me do this. Let me go to seven days here. Let's see. Uh, we got Quant up 108%. Thorchain, 71%. Um, we got Neo that is up um, 39%. Polkadot, 36 as we just said. Um, Chainlink 36. So a lot of the things I heard people say is, oh man, I wish I would have bought Chainlink when it was, you know, in the $20 range, right? Or I wish I would have bought this token or that token or, you know, that token, you know, when it was at, you know, the price that it's at right now. Um, and guess what? They're here now and uh, they're available for interest. Remember, this is not financial advice, but if that's one of you, um, this is one that I, uh, IOTA here you've got, so that's a, another one that's uh, up 36, what, um, oops, sorry, I lost my place here. Uh, no, no, no. I think the screen moved on me there. Oh, there we go, which is up 22%. Um, XRP, um, I know that there's some people predicting a run on XRP as soon as they solve their issues with the uh, government on that side of it, right? So... A lot of great stuff here, guys. A lot of uh, potential buys out in the marketplace. Look at Pancake Swap at $16. So it would be interesting to take a look and see over the last three months the all time high on these and where they're at right now and figuring out which of these are the real super buys out there. And maybe if you guys would like to put in the comments, what is your buy, right? What's the token that you believe has the potential? to increase the most if the bulls are here? And that's the other question. Do you believe that the bull is either here or it's coming here in the next couple of weeks or in September? And uh, another question would be is how long do you think that bull run is going to last? How long do you think it's going to go on? So we know KuCoin here. This is an interesting one. KCS, they just came out with the uh, KuCoin community chain, right? Um, what does that make this do right here? It's up 3.4% in the last seven days. It's got out there. Can their chain take off like Binance chain has? Um, you know, and uh, if, if that's the case, can this be a 20 or 30 extra, right? It's a $797 million market cap. Well, if you look at the B&B, &B, and of course it has other aspects to it, right? Outside of just the chain that they built, um, the Binance Smart Chain. However, can this go to a $7 billion or 14 or $21 billion market cap because of now people launching coins on their chain? Uh, only time will tell, of course, if it takes off and um, is, uh, has that ability. I know that KuCoin is a three second um, transaction time as well. So it's got a fast transaction time on it. 
Um, I actually did a video on um, the KuCoin community chain, and it does use KCS. So this is the um, this is the the chosen token for that chain. Um, Cello is only up 3.8% in the last seven days. So which of these, and this is how, you know, my process is I come down and look at over the last seven days, things are starting to warm up a little bit. If they keep going, you know, what's the possibility? So I would pull these up and go look at their all time highs three months ago, not of course, any time before that. And, you know, once they turn down and these are up the least amount, so they may be the best buys here. Um, now that does not mean that something up here that cannot have a lot of potential because we're only looking out seven days. You may want to look and see on 30 days, on 60 days and begin to examine these. So what I'd love for you to do is if you go in and examine a couple of these, maybe put it down in the chat of what your findings were, maybe share them with everybody out there. You know, BitTorrent's up 30% right now. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's not a secret, guys, that I believe that probably 80% of these, um, just like during the internet days, will not last um, past the next, you know, three to five years. Um, the idea is that doesn't mean you can't make money off of them now um, by getting involved with them and doing it. But at the end of the day, the world rewards utility. The world, the world rewards value. Uh, the biggest companies in the world are that way because they provide value to a lot of people or a lot of value to a smaller group of people, which allow. And that would be company or businesses that serve businesses. They may only have a thousand business clients, but they provide a lot of value for that thousand business clients. So those thousand business clients pay them lots of money where companies like maybe um, Charmin <laughs> provides a lot of value to a lot of people and they get a little bit of money from each one. And that allows them to create that value in the marketplace. So um, we can jump out to page two. So we, we've spent a little bit of time on page one here. Let's see. Let's get to the bottom here. Let's go to the second page there. All right. And let's check out some uh, things there. I mean, Telcoin's down. Uh, that's been one that's run. Theta Fuel. Um, there's still there's more red uh, negative ones on the second page. Remember, there are more than one page on the on the uh, in the crypto space. Right. But you can come through these and start examining on page two. You got safe moon number 71. Isn't that amazing? A group of young guys get together and create a token called safe moon. And it's the 71st most valuable coin in there. Who could have thought right. A hundred and something days ago. Um, of course, you could have got into that token. I saw some, I was looking at some of the accounts and people put in like $4,000 and today they're worth millions of dollars. Um, so those opportunities, um, of course, um, you know, exist in this world, in the crypto space um, there. You've got Phantom 109. So this is one with its own chain. It's beginning to, matter of fact, now you can find some tokens that are starting to post on the Phantom chain. That's very interesting. Um, IOST here's 6.2%. There is a lot of great projects out there um, that will make it. They will end up being, you know, let's compare this to the dot com days. You know, you had a lot of businesses launching, a lot of them taken off there. And then you had a few, right, that became huge Amazon, Priceline, PayPal, eBay. Um, Facebook, uh, these became the juggernaut companies out there. And the key is if you can find those now early in the process, because you do your homework, you know, a lot of people just ape into coins. If you do your homework or find a system, a way of being able to identify um, the right projects um, through that homework, um, then you can become very sick audious. Audius is a, um, it's essentially on the blockchain, but it's like the music, the streaming apps, right? Um, and uh, could this be, you know, the next, um, uh, it's going to pop my head, it's uh, not serious. Um, yeah, I belong to it too. Anyway, uh, the net, the streaming service, but on the blockchain. Um, and they talk about rewarding artists better than, of course, the, uh, the, the, um, the, you know, the, um, the solution that's out there right now. And if you're, if you, if you figure out a way 
to execute much quicker and much faster like DeFi has. So I did a video recently on DeFi and that video talks about why can DeFi pay higher interest rates, less overhead, you know, less people that it has to go through in order to make a decision or, you know, the need for someone to make a decision. If two people can come to a common agreement, what do they need in somebody in the middle getting paid a bunch of money um, when they can just agree through a smart contract and then execute on it and make it much better. So if you can accomplish something for much cheaper, then you can, of course, pay a higher interest rate or you can share more money. In the case of Audius, um, artists are going to be able to keep a bigger piece of it than through a traditional system that's out there, right? Um, in in that space. And um, the app that I'm trying to, it's right there. You guys ever get that where it's, oh, Spotify, there you go, bingo. All right, I had to look on my phone. I cheated a little bit, right? Spotify. So Audios is Spotify, except for it is on the blockchain. And instead of the artist getting a very small amount of the money, the artist gets a bigger piece of that money, allowing for artists to maybe not have to be, you know, the biggest artist in the world to make a living and produce artwork. So that's page two. Let's jump out to page three. Heck, let's check it out. Check it out. All right, page three. Let's go down here. So guys, if you want to put in there your favorite cri cryptocurrency, IOTEX is one that I actually like, guys. Um, so we have the Internet of Things, right? If you want to check out IOTEX, IOTEX is the Internet of Trusted Things. So a huge, huge, huge problem coming up as we connect the world, right? And that is security, safety, people being able to hack into it. Well, there's billions of devices out there, guys, um, on uh, centralized applications, and they are going to, they're developing um, things like security cameras and different types of things that are the uh, internet of trusted things. And I think you're going to start hearing that a lot more as, um, you know, things continue to develop. And that means that nobody can hack your device. I actually think this is the future of self-driving cars. We've all seen the movies where they somebody is in a self-driving car and somebody takes over that car and runs them off a bridge or runs them into traffic or smashes things, right? We've all seen that happen. Well, in an internet of trusted things, things that are not hackable, well, then that is not a possibility. And so could this be one that could go much higher, I believe, and I don't have it. Let me let me see if I can find the, um, the highs here. Uh, let's see, let's go out 180 days here. You guys can see that the peak was way up here back in May, right? So um, it was, uh, I believe that this market cap was over or close to a billion dollars. It was 0.08. So it was about four times where it is right now. So if you take four times its current market cap, so it was 700 and something million dollars somewhere in there for an all time high on this. Um, and uh, can it get back there? Can you do three, four hundred percent just by simply purchasing an existing project that has a great concept and a great idea, right? Being able to trust our devices that we're using would be tremendous in making those where people cannot hack into your cameras, hack into your um, your refrigerator, your car, who knows what is out there as we move into the smart world. So anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and leave it up to you guys to put some tokens in or coins in the bottom that you think will be the ones that have the potential to uh, improve the best. I'm going to jump in and, and look at the comments. And then what we'll do is we'll create some videos. We'll maybe pick the best four or five or six, and then we'll create some videos on those and talk about those, those tokens or coins, whichever one that they are. But I got to tell you, the bulls, I, either they're already here or they're, in my opinion, they're already here or they're getting close to being here. And I think September would be the furthest out that it happens. Um, you know, only time will tell if that is correct or not. Um, but if they are here, there are some great projects that you should be able to just do tremendous with. So anyway, thank you for joining me. I am Peter Gantner. Um, they call me the crypto professor. Again, I don't know why, but they do. And so we'll take that name and we'll run with that. Please, if you like the content that you saw, hit the subscribe button, 
ring the bell, and uh, let us know when you think the Bulls are going to run or are they already running. Thanks for joining us. And crypto on.